Welcome everyone, this is Prof C coming to you from the desert southwest in the U.S., an area that's experiencing record temperatures just like a lot of the rest of the world. And climate change is exactly what I want to talk to you about today, namely a concept called termination shock and why bringing the world back into some sort of stable state climate is going to be extremely difficult. Not impossible, but not as simple as just turning off our use of fossil fuels. Here's an example of what I mean. This year has seen a dramatic increase in record temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean and the fast retreat of the ice shelf. However, these spikes are probably not so much about human-caused heating of the planet being accelerated as we come out of COVID, but more about the elimination of a source of human-caused cooling. Now, it's not news that us humans using fossil fuels for the past couple of centuries has caused a massive unintended and unwanted geoengineering project that's making our planet warmer and warmer. But humans have also been unintentionally geoengineering the planet in order to make the climate cooler, mainly through cloud formation. Clouds increase the amount of the sun's energy that gets reflected back into space we see this when aircraft are traveling in the sky and they create these contrails. But it turns out that large ships that ply our oceans in order to bring us goods, these big container ships, also do the same thing. And they create what's known as ship tracks. And in this case, it's still in the sky, but it's over where the ships have been, not under where the planes have been. Now this phenomenon has been observed for many, many years. But in about 10 years ago, scientists thought these were not really significant contributors to global cooling. Uh, I'm going to link to a video from NASA from about 10 years ago. And in that video, they conclude the ship tracks themselves are too small to affect global temperatures. But they may help us understand how larger pollution sources might change clouds on a bigger scale. But another unintentional bit of human geoengineering is proving otherwise, that these do in fact have a big effect on our atmosphere. In 2020, a mandate for large ships to switch from high sulfur, very, very cheap and very, very dirty fuels, which they've been using for decades, to a low sulfur fuel kicked in in full force. Lower sulfur is better for the environment, better for the air, but it creates less clouds. A recent article in Science Magazine, which I'll link below, summarized it well. Regulations imposed in 2020 by the United Nations International Maritime Organization have cut ship sulfur fuel pollution by more than 80% and improved air quality worldwide. The reduction has also lessened the effect of sulfur particles in seeding and brightening the distinctive low-lying reflective clouds that follow in the wake of ships and help cool the planet. The 2020 IMO rule is a big natural experiment, said an atmospheric physicist at the Scripps Institute for Oceanography. He says, we're changing the clouds. Well, as a result of this unintended effort to increase air quality and reduce pollution going into the ocean, there are fewer clouds and the oceans receive much more energy and get warmer much faster. This sudden stoppage of geoengineering that cools the planet is often called a termination shock, a sudden change that might even kill off all life on Earth or creates a runaway greenhouse effect. Uh, in the worst case, turning the Earth into a planet like Venus. Now, this summer's records have not wiped out all life on Earth. I wouldn't be speaking here today if they had. But for the corals and vertebrates and many other species in the Gulf and the Atlantic, this mini termination shock is the end of the line. Termination shock is also one of many good arguments against using global engineering to counter the planet's warming. Now we have the technology to start geoengineering the world. We could, for example, pump chalk into the upper atmosphere. That seems to be one of the cheapest and most efficient means to do so. And I'll once again link to a TED talk that describes uh, how this could be done or the small amount that would be needed. But personally, I hope we never do this. For me, the main reason is it reeks of a technological solution. 
it'll keep us using fossil fuels at an unsustainable rate instead of addressing the core issue that we need to stop using these fossil fuels. Now, I'm not a climate expert, so let me, uh, I'm going to put in the description here several resources that I've found useful. But before uh, you go on to that, I would just ask that you subscribe and like this video, and please leave your questions and comments below. I read and try to respond to every single comment, and I'm also going to be doing some AMA soon based on the questions I've gotten for, from all of you. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you real soon.